Hey guys, welcome or welcome back. It's Carly or Carls and this is my channel. Thank you for watching another video and if this is your first video from my channel, I appreciate you taking the time to watch it. Um, today, it's gonna be different than any other video that I have on my channel thus far, I'm going to be talking about my journey with ombre brows. Um, I have been wanting ombre brows for a really long time and there was a clear sign that like just led me to take the initiative to start that journey and I wanted to talk about it. I wanted to share about it because previously to me starting this journey, there were not a lot of videos, there were not a lot of articles, there were not a lot of anecdotes in regards to people that looked like me, melanated queens that had ombre brows and if it was something that I could actually get. Um, so I wanted to make sure I was one, one more piece of information on the internet that is beneficial for a lot of girls. There are a lot of girls that look like me. There are a lot of black queens that are like, hmm, I want my brows ombre, but I don't even know if this is accessible to me. I don't even know if this formats well with my skin. I'm here to tell you, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Ironically, I am wearing a hat, literally covering half my brows the day I'm talking about my brows, but there'll be um, pictures inserted and clips and whatnot to relay what I'm talking about, um, as well as, you know, just full description for my lips, because who doesn't love a good story time? I am super excited today because I am going to be getting something done that I've wanted done for a really long time. I am getting ombre brows. Um, if you don't know, it's kind of like a combination of microblading and shading, which gives off kind of a makeup ombre effect on your brows, and that is basically what my brows look like often why not save time and just already have them done so I'm super excited for that I'm gonna take you guys along with the journey with me from pre-care to during maybe to post care we'll see how much I can film but I'm excited <laughs> also if you haven't noticed I did move um, my place is nowhere near ready to be shown in any sort of way, um, but just know that might be something that comes in the future, whether it's organization or just um, upcycling things that I'm working on. But yeah, just stay tuned. Let's go on this ride together. Okay, so I was gonna get a visor for when, excuse me. I was gonna get a visor for when my eyebrows are done. That way there's like no exposure to sunlight, but the dollar store and Ross didn't have any visors. So I'm gonna just go to my appointment um, and So I just got home and I'm completely in love with my brows. I know they're going to change in the next couple weeks, but if this is where we're starting, bet. Um, but yeah, I was basically told that I would probably lose about 20 to 25% of the pigment that's in there right now. And it being a little bit faded than this, I'm kind of okay with because my actual brow shade is a little bit lighter than this but if it gets too light obviously i have my touch-up appointment in like six to eight weeks so i can knock that out but i'm sad guys because i left my hydro flask there so yeah brows hydro flask anyways i'm super excited and i'll keep you guys updated on the healing process and how crazy they look the next couple of days um, but yeah. Okay, hello. No shame coming at you from my bonnet. <laughs> this is day two of having my ombre brows. Gonna give you a quick check-in. I just wanted y'all to see how bomb they still look. 
Um, I'm a little bit nervous on what they're gonna look like when they start scabbing and stuff, but right now I'm living in the fantasy. Hello again, it is day four of my ombre brow healing process. Um, I just wanted to check in to show you guys how they were doing. They are almost starting to peel a little bit, a little bit of more uneven tones, and they are super to appear to be oily right now just because I just put some um, ointment on them. I'm gonna slowly pan in. Please excuse my edges, but I just wanted to show you. All right, cool. So you can see there's a little bit of unevenness and they just seem like really like moisturized, but they're really not like, you know, like if you are someone that has like oily or combo skin, um, I don't know. I feel like when we're really oily, is basically when our body's like, I don't have enough natural oils right now, so I'm gonna produce them myself. And I feel like that's kind of what my eyebrows are doing. Um, but yeah, it's just interesting because I know that this isn't their final form. Um, but yeah, it's been cool so far. So I'll keep you guys updated and I'll see you soon. I also asked my Instagram if they had specific questions about my brow journey as well but before I get into that I just wanted to talk about general synopsis of what I did what I'm still doing and the recovery process and all that jazz um, so first of all um, I'm not a professional so my definition could be a bit obscured but um, so ombre brows are basically, you know, you have the traditional microbladed brows, which are more like hair-like strokes. Um, and then you have the combination of shading, which is more like, literally, you think of the word shading, just um, colored in, if you will, like a gradient, if you will. Um, I think traditional microblading, microbladed brows are beautiful, but I do not think that they hold up well for all skin types. I don't think they hold up well for all levels of melanin, but I do think that ombre brows do. So that's why I was really excited when it was accessible to me. Also, if I, if this wasn't, um, if this wasn't obvious, um, I'm talking about semi-permanent tattooing basically on your face which is so it's a decision if you're not thinking about doing it don't do it because it's literally like you wouldn't get a tattoo on your arm or your, your foot or your neck if you weren't sound about it so if you're even though it's semi-permanent and not fully permanent if you don't have any inclination to get your brows done don't save your money um, I honestly, I've wanted my brows ombre for a long time. One, I love my natural brows. Um, I'm really blessed to have like curly hair all over my body and like just fullness. Um, but I wanted more of a enhanced look that matched when I did my makeup or, you know, the days where I'm not wearing makeup and I literally, you know, still look I don't know how to describe that, but I I love a full brow and I've always wanted a fuller brow and I'm very thankful for the brows I have, but I was presented with an opportunity to get my brows done by an amazing technician and someone that she was training, so I ran with the opportunity. Um, so basically, um, I don't know if you could see them. I have makeup on right now, but they're still, they're healed, but they're not fully healed. Okay, let me slow down because I am going back and forth with the questions that people probably have and I'm not giving a full synopsis. Okay, so basically I followed this super amazing brow technician on Instagram. I've been following her for almost a couple years now and she just always does amazing work and she also trains people while i think that ombre brows are amazing i have no interest to do them on other people because i think that's 
is awesome, but it's not something that I personally want to do. But I do follow her page aesthetically just to see um, how she does her brows. And it's just like really nice to look at. Um, but basically there, I had been thinking about getting ombre brows for a while and there was a random day that literally the second I went on Instagram, um, she posted that she needed a model um, for a training. And I was like, wait a minute. I'll be that model <laughs> and it had to be someone that had never gotten ombre brows before um basically to get brows at a discounted rate a very discounted rate um and if you're not familiar ombre brows are pretty expensive they can range from like six to nine hundred dollars i would say um it probably depends on who you go to and their credibility, years in the game, and location, but it's expensive. And that's just for the initial, um, that's just for the initial session. It's recommended for most technicians say that you should go in for a touch up after six to eight weeks. So that's expensive. So when I saw that they needed a model, which in my eyes, I see dollar signs being saved. I'm like, cool, I'll do that. Um, so I had a really good experience, honestly. She was training a technician, but she was, her and her assistant were there the whole time overseeing what was happening, stepping in when necessary, and just making sure that me as a client was taken care of overall. So I really do respect that. Um, I feel like in the past, um, even for like lashes, I would go get my lashes done at, a, you know, a cheaper rate by a lash tech that was being trained, but they treated the, the, the clients or the models like they weren't really clients because they were the models, because they were getting at a discounted rate. And I don't really think that's okay. So I really had a good experience on the flip side with this. And I would definitely recommend getting serviced by both the person that uh, trained her and the actual tech that did my um, brows as well but um, needless to say I I'm really excited I haven't even gotten my touch up yet but at this point my brows are fully healed um, so my touch up appointment would be a lot shorter and I'm just excited guys okay without for further ado I'm gonna start answering these questions so I don't bumble my words and talk in circles for five hours <laughs> about how excited I am. Okay, so the first question I received is, is it for any type of skin or brow? Um, I would say, I mean, I'm not a professional, but the what I got ombre brows is more acceptable than I feel like microblading is in terms of like how it heals and how it looks on different brows. If you have extremely sensitive skin, it is possible, but I would just think about if this is something that you really want because if you think about, you know, if you get a tattoo, the healing process is kind of ugly. Um, and if you have sensitive skin on top of that, it, I don't know, it might cause a weird irritation or something. I'm not a professional, but I would say it's pretty accessible not accessible that's the wrong word it's pretty well-rounded in regards to like what type of skin um if you have pre-existing health conditions i would definitely think about if you really want to do something like this but for the most part i think it's pretty cool <laughs> um how long does it last for was another question um so the initial treatment or i don't even know what to call it treatment procedure i don't know the initial consultation um you get it done your brows heal in about six to eight weeks i mean your brows heal in about two and a half weeks i would say and then after six and a, six to eight weeks you can get your touch up and then after that it depends on the state of your brows, but you can go back in like a year, you can go back in like over a year. It honestly just depends how your brows look, which I like, it's not something that you, like lashes that you have to go like every couple of weeks or every month, like nails, like it's, 
it's definitely not something that's like I don't know. I like that it's a form of maintenance that you don't have to do all the time. But I do like that there is a recommendation to go back and get that touch up every year or every so forth. I, basically, like the longer you wait to get touch ups, the more expensive they're going to be. So it's always good to like see where you're at on the earlier side anyway. But it's semi permanent. It lasts a good bit of time. Um, did it hurt that is a good question okay so there is like i don't know what it's called but a form of like numbing cream that goes on my brows to where i don't know first of all i have a pretty high pain tolerance i would say so like overall it didn't hurt to me i would say it's more of a discomfort as if like if you've ever gotten an actual like tattoo tattoo on your body it's like that but not even that bad it's more of like since it's on your face i couldn't feel it but i could hear it so that was just kind of like the weird irritable part of like oh there is a needle in my face <laughs> um but it didn't hurt to me i feel like if you have a lower pain threshold i'm gonna say yes it does hurt or yes it is uncomfortable because i don't want if you end up getting on my brows to have these unrealistic expectations of you not feeling a thing um i want to be real about that um but if it if you do have a lower pain tolerance it's a total tolerable discomfort i would say um what does the healing process entail okay <laughs> so i'll talk about this because for me, like, I feel like it went a little bit longer than what uh, I initially thought it would, but I was fully prepared. Okay, so basically, while your brows are healing, you can't, like, go swimming. You're not supposed to really get your brows wet. Um, and sun exposure, it's really important in regards to, like, how your brows heal, how, how the pigmentation stays and whatnot. Um so the most annoying point for me was one taking showers and two like scheduling my days around how much sun exposure i have i work from home but there are a lot of things that i needed to run errands for when i got my brows done to where i was like oh let me wait until 8 p.m like when the sun's not as strong um so i <laughs> i'll insert a picture here but um this was basically how i took showers in the beginning when i couldn't get my brows wet it was super annoying and i'm one of those people that loves like a fully submerged like just really get i love skincare so just really get into my face like making sure my pores are like absolutely nourished and scrubbed down it was really annoying that for the longest time i was not able to really do that like i wanted to okay so this <laughs> this is what it looks like when i'm showering while protecting my brows they are completely scabbing um and they're not supposed to be wet so i was given this by the brow technician and trainer and it's been working well so far i do completely miss submerging my head in water though can anyone else relate to that when you can't get parts of your face wet and you're like man i really wish i could just get in there um but yeah also for pre-care um you're not advised to use like retinal products you're not advised to get a facial prior to i think it's like a couple weeks prior to you're not advised to use products with like ahas bhas in them and my not my actual uh cl facial cleanser but my exfoliate that if you actually <laughs> shameless plug for another video if you haven't seen my um june favorites video it's actually featured on there but one of my favorite exfoliates that i use from Arad, um it actually is an aha bha clean bha cleanser so it was really annoying that i couldn't really use that prior to getting my brows done as well as when i first got my brows done i just thought it would be safe to like take a break on it as well um, but that was annoying, not having, like, my favorite skincare to use. Um, 
and just exposure. I wore a lot of hats. I mean, I love hats, so I didn't really mind that part too much, but just being cognizant of like how much sun exposure I'm giving it, um, how much sun exposure I'm giving them and just like overall, like, are they okay up there? Like, did I get them wet? So that part of the healing process was super annoying also. For the first couple days, they still look beautiful and glistening. I think I have a picture of that as well. They just look, they look really good. And at this point I was like, all right, I know it's gonna get worse than this, but they look damn good right now. And I'm excited for what the future holds. And then they start scabbing. <laughs> and it's not cute. It's not cute and it's annoying because the way they scab, you're recommended to not like take those scabs off so it's literally like picture if you had like a scab from like falling down or something right here and you just want to like pick it off you can't you literally just have to wait for it to naturally fall off and it's the most annoying gross thing ever i don't even know how to explain it better than i just did but that part was annoying also annoying i i don't know on a makeup standpoint i feel like i'm known for like my brows for the most part um yes i have beautiful eyes and other features but i don't know i feel like when i do get compliments on my makeup a lot of time it's like oh i love your brows girl or like you know stuff like that so the fact that i couldn't put makeup in my brows during this scabbing time was so annoying because it would be parts of my brow that would be super dark and parts of my brow that are like non-existent and it's it's just, like gross and like you aren't supposed to get it wet, but um, I basically put like a ointment similar to like Aquaphor on it a couple times a day with a Q-tip and just like literally did like this. And it was just like, I don't know. It was gross guys, it was so gross. Um, so basically like it would scab some parts would get super light some parts would get dark and then after they finished scabbing they were pretty light and then i would say about a week after that they got a little bit darker but obviously i was told because of the skin type i have like oily combination skin i would lose probably like 15 to 25 percent of the pigmentation that originally was there so i was expecting it but i actually retained more than i thought i would so i'm just excited for my touch-up appointment to like have the crisp clean i don't like to use the word perfect but more pristine brows that i envision in my head they already look amazing but i'm just excited but that part of the healing process was gross um it's gross I yeah yeah that was that honestly was the worst part <laughs> and I'm gonna have to go through that again with my touch-up appointment but now that I'm aware of like how it is I'm more prepared of how to take care of it and how to just get through it and not schedule a million things right after I get my brows done um, but yeah that part was gross how much is it um, so obviously it would depend on what brow technician you're going to, their location, their rates, their experience, and what have you. I was lucky and I, um, it was a model opportunity for someone being trained, so I didn't have to pay the normal rate, but I know for that brow technician, that first initial appointment would be around six to eight hundred dollars. Um, keep in mind you're paying that the first time but then touch-ups after that are like literally a third of that price so it's a big investment at first but after that it's worth it honestly if I didn't get this opportunity I would save up and do it with my own coin that full price because they did an amazing job and yeah Okay, let me see if there was any other questions I saw. What do you wish you knew about the process before getting them done? Um, to be honest, I'm the kind of person that if I'm getting something done that I've never done before, I do a lot of research. If I am doing something that I've never done before, I look up everything possible of every scenario that 
could happen. This is the type A personality in me. So I don't know, that's part of the reason why I'm doing this video is because I want to be that video that someone else sees when they're going through the same journey as me and figuring out if this is something that they want, especially as a black woman. Um, so I would say there, <laughs> For this process, there wasn't really much that I was like, damn, I wish I knew that more. Or I wish I knew that prior to getting them done because I pretty much know everything that I knew. I pretty much, how do I say that correctly? I pretty much knew everything I needed to know before I got them done. Uh, <laughs> ironically, maybe I wish I would have known how long it would take me to get to the destination I was going to get them done because I didn't pre look it up on my navigation system that <laughs> ironically that's the only thing I can think of because I was almost late um but I made it <laughs> don't worry I made it um but yeah I don't know if that's pretty much about all I can think of about the process. If anybody has any additional questions, feel free to message me on Instagram or, you know, drop in the comments and I'll make sure to reply. But I'm really excited that I did this and I'm excited to get my touch up soon. And I really hope this video helps someone that was thinking about getting ombre brows, especially someone that is further melanated and apprehensive about like the resources that are online to tell you about ombre brows but i'm a fan and i'm excited and yeah feel free to message me if you want to chat about it i'm not a professional by any means i'll have um the brow text information below but yeah thanks for watching this video if you watched it all the way through um i'm excited for what's to come if you liked this video go ahead and give it a thumbs up and i will see you in the next one this is the best brush for brows i used to be like tried and true for like anastasia's i forgot what number brow it is but i for the past couple years have been using benefits brow brush and it is like i don't know if you could see like it's just like perfect for you you just be getting in there get this if you don't have it also i'm saving money like i literally like because i have my brows on braid i don't even have to use as much pomade i use ebony ebony can you see it ebony dip out pomade from anastasia i would love to use a black owned business so if you know a pomade that works better than that that is also black owned let me know so i can try it out and yeah thanks guys thanks guys i don't know if you could see them can you see my brows um yeah they're just you guys, I love my brows. I love my brows. You know, like, also this bucket hat, come on now. Come on now. I love my brows.